So we are finally gonna get to box plots. These are probably my favorite plot to make or the plot I make the most often. Um, and to create a box plot, you need five numbers. We call those five numbers the five number summary. So the five numbers included in the five number summary are the minimum, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the max. So min, Q1, median, Q3, and max. You need those five numbers and then you can create a box plot. So these are the five numbers you need to construct a box plot. And if you think about where we can find min, Q1, median, Q3, and the max, that's all from one variable stats. So as soon as you do some data entry and crunch one var stats L1, you have enough information to create a box plot. So box, plot look, box plots look like this, but keep in mind it needs a scale, so we will obviously scale our x-axis. This is one of those graphs where, yes, the variable is along the x-axis, but we don't have frequency or relative frequency along the y-axis. There is no scale along the y-axis. So that makes box plots pretty unique. So how we create a box plot is I typically make five vertical bars. So I'll make one at the min, one at Q1, one at the median, Q3, and the max. And I will box in the middle 50% of my data and I will whisker out to the max and min. And I know that sounds like a lot, but you'll see how this goes. It's not too terrible. They're kind of fun to make actually. Well, like I said, I really like them. So box plots, sometimes you'll hear them referred to as box and whisker plots. The box comes from this middle box, the middle 50% of your data, Q1 to Q3, and we call the whiskers. You whisker out from Q3 to the max or Q1 down to the min. Now for, for this particular problem, I'm gonna make a regular box plot. When we get to the next page, we're gonna make modified box plots. And when you modify your box plots, you're actually showing the outliers if they're present. So we're just gonna make a regular old box plot and then we're gonna pick up modified box plots because I'm, I'm gonna officially tell you how to calculate outliers. And once we start making modified box plots, we will only modify our box plots, okay? So in a moment, I'm gonna read example six. Like always, I want you to think, what is the variable in this problem, okay? All right, so here we go. The Oregon Department of Health Services publishes cost-to-charge ratios for hospitals in Oregon on its website. The cost-to-charge ratio is computed as the ratio of the actual cost of care to what the hospital actually bills for care, and the ratio is usually expressed as a percentage. A cost-to-charge ratio of 60% means that the actual cost is 60% of what was billed. The ratios for 31 hospitals in Oregon for inpatient services in 2012 were, and then we have our data hanging out there. All right, so take a moment, think what was the variable? I'll tell you, here was our sample, all right? We were looking at 31 hospitals. So again, what was I asking of those hospitals? Was I asking, uh, were they HMO or PPO? Was I asking how many doctors they have on staff? Was I asking what was their favorite coffee to drink? No, I was asking them about their cost to charge ratios. That's what this was representing. This first hospital in Oregon had a 68% cost to charge ratio, 76% cost to charge ratio. So our variable in this problem is the cost to charge ratio for hospitals. And our units, they told them to you, they were in percentages. Okay, and just to give you an idea, Right, they told you 60% cost to charge ratio means the actual cost was 60% of what was billed. Another way of saying this is if a cost to charge ratio is 60%, if a hospital has this kind of cost to charge ratio, they're making a 40% profit off of you. So this is what I mean by that. If I got a bill for $100 at a 60% cost to charge ratio, if I multiply that by 0.60, again, converting that percentage to a decimal, this is saying it actually cost the hospital $60. They charged me 100 bucks, but it only cost them $60 to care for me. So if you look at that difference, they made $40 off of my visit, okay? So the lower the cost to charge ratio, the shadier the hospital. 
Okay, so with all of that being said, if we look at our directions, it says find the five number summary and construct a box plot. All right, I need my five number summary, min, q1, median, q3, max. So let's go find those using one bar stats. Now, I went ahead and I plugged all of my data into my lists. I didn't check it before I turned this camcorder on. So let's see, I do have 31 data points because I can see that 32 is the first blank cell. So I'm in good shape there. I might've made a typo entering my data in, but at least I have the correct number of data points. Let me go back to my home screen, do a little one bar stats. And you can see the mean, the average cost to charge ratio is about 70.6%. All right, let me scroll down here. And there are my five numbers for my five number summary. And I'm just gonna write them in the margin so that I have them for reference. So we've got min, Q1, median, Q3 and max. Okay. Once you have those five numbers, you have everything you need. You can go ahead and make your box plot. So you have to decide how you want to scale your X axis. If I look at my spread here, I'm going from 45 to 100. I've got a range of about 55%. So I feel like it would be good to go by every fives on the X axis, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, so on and so forth. If you wanna go by tens, if you wanna go 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, that's great also. So you have that flexibility. So I'm gonna scooch this up so I have a good chunk of space and here we go. So I'm gonna make my X axis first. Oops, looks like I might be missing one. Okay. Oh, and I actually went a little too far. That's fine. It's okay to have a little bit longer x-axis than you want. I do want to make sure I label my x-axis. So these, these variables were hospital cost to charge ratios. And those units were percentages. Okay. All right, so here's, here's how this works. I'm gonna make five vertical bars somewhere, maybe like an inch above my x-axis. It doesn't matter how far up. I'm gonna make five vertical bars at the x values of 45, 62, 71, 76, and 100. So give me a moment to make those vertical marks. So you can see my five vertical marks hanging out. Uh, I mentioned before, but it's worth repeating again, there's no label on the y-axis. There's no frequency or relative frequency. That's something that's unique to a box plot. All right, so again, why do we call this a box and whisker plot? So we're gonna box the middle 50% of my data. So between Q1 and Q3, I'm gonna put a box around it, and then I'm gonna whisker out to my max and min. So I will box the middle 50% of my data And then I will whisker out, oops, excuse me. I hit my 
my tray here. So I will whisk her out. To the max and then there's my box pot now you don't have to but I, I always do this I like to write the numbers here I like to put as much information as I can on my graphs so that if people didn't have the setup didn't have the word problem or the raw data they could understand what was going on here all right so first quartile second quartile third quartile fourth quartile middle 50% lower half of your data upper half of your data. Lots of ways to split this apart, okay? Now, in terms of these questions asked of us, we're, we're getting to the point where we can start to answer more. So in terms of my center, I have two options here. I could quote my mean or my median, but I already have my median. So since I don't need to quote both, I'll just put my median is 71%. Great. For my spread, we have a bunch at this point that we can use, right? We've talked, you can use spread, range, variance, standard deviation. And if you remember from your calculator, you have a good chunk of those numbers. Let me run this again, right? There's my standard deviation, but I'm gonna use range because I like range the best. So I'm gonna do 100 minus 45, high minus low, and find out that range was 55%. So we haven't talked about shape. When we get to the next page, we're gonna pick up outliers, so we're getting closer to outliers, and that means we're getting closer to being able to talk about our socks. Now this last question says, between what two data values does the middle 50% of the data lie? Your middle 50% is always between your Q1 and Q3. So in this case, it lies between 62% and 76%. So half of our hospitals were in here. We're somewhere between 62 and 76%. And keep in mind, we had 31 hospitals. So about 15 or 16 hospitals, their data values landed in this band, this band between 62 and 76%, right? There is about seven or eight over here and seven or eight over here, okay? All right, so I'm gonna flip off doing this by hand. All right, and then I'm gonna flip over to how you do it by your calculator. Hey guys, so we're gonna take a look at how to make a box plot on our calculator. So if I wanna make a box plot on my calculator, like with most graphs on your calculator, the first thing you wanna start with is data entry. So I'm gonna hit stat and I'm gonna hit enter. And I, I already put in my, my data for, or my data into the list. So I'm ready to go with that. So great. Once you've done data entry, the next thing you wanna do is set up your stat plot. So let me go to second and y equals. And if I look at my stat plot right now, I have one plot on, two plots off, that's great. But I can see that the type of plot I have is not uh, a box plot, it's a histogram right now. So I'm gonna to need to go in and edit this stat plot. So it's turned on. Um, again, when I come down to type, there are six types of graphs that we can make six stat plots. We've looked at the histogram. Right now we're gonna look at these next two. They're in the bottom row. So over here is the modified box plot, which we're about to get to. That'll be the next example. But here's where we're gonna focus right now. So in this bottom row, we want the middle icon there. That's just your regular old box plot. So to get there, it's a little bit wonky. You have to go down to type and you can't hit the down arrow key again because if you hit the down arrow key, it'll send you to your X list, right? So what I need to do is hit the right arrow key and that will take me into that bottom row. And I'm gonna hover over that box plot icon and I'm gonna hit enter so that the histogram no longer has the black background, but the box plot does. So when I do that, you can now see that the box plot is flashing with the black background and I'm good to go. My variable is an L1. And since I entered each of those data values in exactly once, I wanna keep my frequencies at one. So once you've got your, your data entered, all you do is hit a little zoom nine, right? and there's my, my box plot. And it looks pretty similar to the one we graphed by hand. Here's the one I did on my computer. You can hit the trace button, and you're, you're gonna see your calculator will give you the five number summary. There's the median, if I go to the left, Q1. There's the min, if I headed to the right, I go Q3 and the max. 
So that's, that's it. That's all there is to creating a box plot on your calculator. So in a moment, we're going to pick up what it means to graph a modified box plot, and that includes outliers. And then I'll show you how you make a modified box plot on your calculator. All right. Thanks, guys.